Now today we're going to be taking a look at the steering system on the Toyota Prius. Now the Prius uses an electric power steering system, so we're going to remove the steering column to see what's inside and how it works. Now if we look underneath the steering column with all the plastic panels removed, you can follow the steering column all the way down to this unit over here. And it's got the steering motor off to the side over here, so we're going to pull out this entire assembly so we can have a closer look at how this works. Now down over here you can see where the steering column is going to join to the steering rack, which is going to send its inputs out to the tie rods to actually turn the wheels. I've already got another video on how electric power steering systems work for a rack mounted EPS motor so you'll want to click the link above to see that however this one here has got a column mounted EPS motor so it's set up a little bit different now taking a look at the steering column setup here you can see of course we've got our steering wheel and airbag assembly then inside of here we have the clock spring assembly with your turn signal switch you've got the column itself now this column is just a tilt steering wheel which means that if you release this here it will allow this thing to tilt and then you can adjust it this one does not telescope but the real magic happens down over here now all of this stuff here including the motor remains stationary in the vehicle and then your steering wheel turns and you can see the output here is also turning at the same rate as the input. Now down over here you've got our electric power steering motor and this just runs off of 12 volts. Now this is actually a torque sensor which is going to sense the driver's inputs coming from the steering wheel over here and then tell this computer here how to control this EPS motor in order to give you steering assist. Now looking at this electronic power steering computer, you can see we've got our inputs here that are going to come from the torque sensor. We've got other inputs here that is going to feed other data from the CAN bus on the rest of the computer, such as your braking, your speed sensors and all that. We've got the output here that's going to output 12 volts to this DC electric motor. And then of course you've got your inputs here. Now these use a thicker gauge wire because it is a high amperage application. So now I'm going to start disassembling this steering system so we can take a closer look at what's inside. So that one part, and then we've got the other part here with the steering sensor on this side. Now this is the cool part, you've got your DC electric motor over here, you've got the input shaft coming in here from the steering column, and then you've got the output over on this side here, which has got this universal joint on it, and that's going to go down to your steering rack. You've got this entire housing here that's going to house this piece which is actually going to rotate all together. You can see that it's fully encased in grease. Alright, I found this old sock lying in my brother's laundry. So I'll just use it here to wipe off all of this grease so we can take a closer look. You can see it appears we've got a giant gear on the outside here to which this input gear attaches to. And then that is also driven off of a spiral gear by the electric power steering motor. That means that I can still manually steer the vehicle, but then when the electric power steering system wants to add assist, it's going to rotate the motor in order to add torque to the shaft here. Right, if I connect this motor up to 12 volts here, you can see how it spins. It feels like it's got quite a bit of torque to it, but it doesn't spin that fast. Of course, ideally, you wouldn't want this motor to spin too fast, and they've done that using this gear ratio over here. There's also, of course, the gear ratio over here on the steering rack from the pinion to the rack itself, and that's because you prefer for more torque in order to actually turn the wheels as opposed to a really quick steering ratio that could cause the car to handle twitchy. We're going to take this apart now. So this is actually not a 10 and it's not an 8. I haven't used my 9mm since the last 10 I used stripped out. I'll just pop this cover off here. I can feel the magnetic force. Yeah, the magnets are actually inside of this sleeve that's pressed into this casing. This thing could form a nice cup to throw your extra bolts in there no matter how much you make it fall down. So we've got the magnets here off to the side and here we've got the armature which has got all the coils wrapped around it. It looks pretty cool and you can see when I turn this it actually is a direct drive over to the spiral itself. And next I'm going to remove these two 14 millimeter bolts that hold this armature assembly to the spiral gear assembly here. Alright now I can pop this off. And you can see this is the armature assembly. Now if we take a really close look inside of this armature here, you can see of course we've got our individual coils that are wrapped around inside of here. This is a brushed motor. You can see that the power supply is actually going to provide power over to these four brushes all the way around here. And that's what's going to individually power up each one of these coil sets and then the magnets are going to cause them to rotate. Now looking around here besides the armature, you've got a little bearing on the end here. And then there's another bearing that's pressed in here. So I'll just undo these screws here. There's also this rubber bushing inside of here. Now using my favorite mechanical press, I was able to beat the armature out here. You can see we've got a closer look at the brush assembly that sits inside of here. These here are the brushes. You can see they're kind of spring loaded. So they're always pressing up against this armature over here. Now this could also wear out. And that's why we don't like to use brushed motors. Now there's a giant nut here that I don't have a socket for. Then on the back of this main shaft here, you can see there's another giant socket that I would need for this. It has to be a pretty deep socket as well. So I just nick this nut here with this hammer and punch, and it's already turning. Should be able to extract this spiral here. It's pretty greasy, so I'm going to have to bring in my brother's old sock again. Alright, so same thing here. I was able to get this one to turn as well. 
Don't need no big socket anymore. I can pull this guy off. Got a bearing on the inside here with a snap ring. Yeah, it looks like it's actually made of plastic. Now a typical spiral gear is only going to allow a one-way direction where this has to be your input and that is going to turn in order to turn your output. And if you turn your output, it's going to kind of lock up because of the way the teeth are cut. In this case, the teeth are cut like this, but because it's plastic, it reduces the friction a lot. And you can see, I can actually rotate this as I turn the steering gear. Now, they have to have this in place in case your steering does fail and you have to resort to manual power steering. Now, if you use regular gears, it probably wouldn't be able to happen because of the friction between them, but the plastic just allows so much friction. I'm just kind of scared that this plastic might delaminate from this flange over here one day and then you just kind of lose your power steering. Now, a lot of other systems systems use a planetary gear set here where you've got your input coming from the shaft you got your output going to the steering rack and then you've got your carrier gear which is connected to your motor it still allows for mechanical connection it still allows for a direct mechanical connection and it also allows for your motor to free spin so now that we've seen how the motor works in the EPS system, let's turn our attention over to the steering column. Now the steering column has a couple of functions. Obviously it allows you to turn the steering wheel, but the main thing is that it allows the steering wheel to rotate, which allows the transfer of motion down to the steering shaft. And in this case, now we're gonna start by disassembling this. You gotta take off the airbag connector off. You don't need that anymore. We've already got another video on how airbags work, so check that out linked above. Maybe you've got this main nut here, which is what's gonna connect your steering wheel to the steering shaft. And I'm just going to jiggle that off with my mechanical press. Now this entire assembly here has the clock spring integrated in here. There we remove the clock spring. And you can also see we've got another sensor here. Now the steering angle sensor is actually part of your ABS and stability control system. It's not really part of the EPS system. Because the EPS system is only working with your torque sensor, which is down at the bottom here. It doesn't really need to know where the position of the steering wheel is. It just needs to know how much torque is applied and which direction should you apply the torque. Let's just open up the steering angle sensor to see what's inside. Looks like we've got a circuit board inside of here. Over here it looks like we've got some sort of an encoder which is what's going to pick up the little signals from this disc over here. Now this here is the clock spring. Now if you do turn this more than the allotted amount it's going to break the cable inside of there. So make sure you don't do that like I just did. And here it goes. This typically allows you about five turns depending on the steering ratio of your vehicle. Now I do have another video with more detail explaining how this works and how to replace it on your vehicle. So make sure you check that out linked above. Now if you check back to my steering column video, you'll figure out how the turn signal clicky thing works in order to cancel your turn signals. And now we're just left with the steering column and the shaft inside until it's got a bearing on the inside there. And then inside of here, it's splined. Now looking closely inside of here, this is the torque sensor. You can see that there's these white bands inside of here. And those white bands are going to actually correspond to these little holes or teeth on the steering shaft over here. So when this is plugged in inside of here, as these teeth rotate, whatever sensors inside of here is going to pick up the position of these holes over here. And that's what's going to tell the computer where you intend to turn the steering wheel. Okay, let's open this up to see what's inside. Pop off that cover. It looks like we've got a circuit board with four points here that are soldered to it. So at the top of the steering shaft here where the torque sensor is, I have a ring here. So it looks like inside of here we have the two rings that correspond to these rings over here. Inside of here we've got our circuit board. It's got four wires coming out and there's these four points here that are soldered in. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my brother's desoldering tool here to desolder this. And there we have the circuit board. All right, and if you pop out the sensor, so what it looks like with your four connectors that were soldered to your board. All right, now I suspect that there's some sort of coil in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this open. All right, now I'll see if I can peel this apart here. Oh, wow. So the way this torque sensor works is this is going to sit around here. You've got these ferrous materials that are in between here and the coils that are inside of these white plastic pieces. Now this coil is going to correspond to this set and this coil is going to correspond over to this set. Now this here forms your reference signal. So as this is rotating here, you've got this coil which is energized and that's going to create a magnetic field. This little pattern here is going to disrupt that magnetic field and that's going to be picked up by your circuit board over here which is going to be processed and sent back over to the steering ECU. Now over on this side here, you've got a change in magnetic field that's going to occur. Because this is a torque sensor and this is going to rotate back and forth, well that means that the signal between these two teeth here is going to change inside of here relative to your reference signal and that change is going to be picked up again by this computer here which is going to send the signal out to either turn the motor clockwise or counterclockwise to assist you. Now here's a closer look at how this torsion bar works. You can see I max it out on this direction then I max it out over in this direction. Total torsion is probably about four or five degrees or so but that's just enough to change the signal here so that it's detected by the coil. So to get a closer look, I'm going to chop this open. Okay, let's see if I can break this off. Oh, it actually came out. 
So looking inside of here, you can see we've got this little beam, which is your torsion beam. Now this side is going to be fixed to the wheels just due to friction. This side is going to come along here with this key inside of here, and it's going to rotate inside of here. You can see there's a little bit of wiggle room inside of here, so it's first going to rotate that torsion beam before actually turning the gear itself to turn your steering wheel. Now that little slack is taken up by these two keyways here, and the flats over here. That allows that relative motion between the two, but once you've caught that motion over there, you can continue turning against these flats here. So that way the small little thing here is not really taking the turning forces it's actually these flats over here so as that comes off here I can actually break this off here and you'll see that's what it looks like with that torsion beam on this side now this torque sensor is actually very similar to the rotary valve on a hydraulic power steering rack so if you want to see how that works make sure you click the link above to learn about hydraulics in terms of the actual electronics itself it looks like we've got a processing chip over here and then there's a bunch of resistors and capacitors that supposedly do the filtering in order to change this into a usable signal that can be fed to the steering ECU. Speaking of that steering ECU, let's take a look inside of here to see what's going on. We'll just pop that open and you can see we've got a circuit board inside of here. Now these two big connectors here are the ones that come from power and go to the motor. So I'm assuming that this half of the circuit board here with these larger contacts are your high current contact. It appears that this part is just a solid chunk of aluminum and feels like a heatsink. Not much else I can say inside of here besides having a couple of these transistors over here, capacitors, an inductor, and some relay. I've read somewhere that some people can actually use the Prius system as its own closed loop system. You don't need any other connections. I've read somewhere that the steering ECU, the motor, and the torque sensor can actually be transferred over to other cars with no extra wiring needed. It's pretty much just a bolt-on style setup. So for those of you who are building a hot rod or a go-kart or something and need electric power steering, the system's pretty simple and something you should probably look into. Now your steering rack is fairly straightforward, but essentially you've got your pinion over here that goes to the pinion gear. You've got your rack inside of here, these bushings that are going to mount it. Then you've got your inner tie rod and then the outer tie rod way over here. Now I've already done a video on how these inner and outer tie rods work as well as the steering rack. So if you want to see what's inside of this steering rack, make sure you check out that video linked above. So the next time you want to drift your Prius around the corner, think of all these components inside of the steering system that make it work. Now make sure you follow me on Instagram for more behind the scenes footage and subscribe for more videos just like this one.